How you doing, man? All right, how you doing, man? Give it, give it up a little I'm bit. I'm hanging. Baby. Hold it for What's a minute. Yes, indeed. How's the house doing? That nice house we keep reading about? Oh, it's doing good. You know, it's coming along uh, slowly, but but surely, you know, because I'm not there to really uh, check it out, you know, watch everything that's going on. But it's coming along real well. Hopefully, uh, by Christmas, you know, it'll be done. Now, you were building bowling alleys at the house, too, and I know your partner, Evander, loves to bowl. Uh, Have you ever bowled against him? Why we got to talk about that? Well, because he told me uh, a story, and I want to make sure it's true. It's true, but he, he threw nine strikes in a row. See, I thought he was lying. Nine in a row? He threw nine strikes in a row, took my $500. He didn't tell you about that part either. Huh? Oh. <laughs> but, you know, I, I thought we were going to bowl for fun. Yeah. He, he can bowl. Bowl. Yeah. Oh, I, I don't know how to bowl that well, so I'm going to get me a bowling alley together or something and learn how to play so I can get my money back. Why didn't you build something? Why didn't you build something in your house that you can do? You know, I mean, uh, like, like build a set of dance fever or something. You know, <laughs> why build a bowling alley? You, do you want to learn? I guess. Yeah, I just want to learn. I need something else to do. You know, uh, and uh, something else. You know, a challenge. And I think bowling would be fun. You know, if I can learn. Yeah. I know everybody's looking at us saying, forget the small talk. We've been reading all the 411. <laughs> and everybody wants to know. I, actually, I'm concerned because there's some serious stuff going on in your life, man. Um, first of all, I know when the road manager for Boys to Men was killed and, you know, God bless him. He, he was a good guy and he was with Boys to Men and even New Edition when they were young. Um, when he was killed, you were, you were around in that area. And then I read the other day about the shooting that happened um what's going on would you like to talk about it well you know it's uh you know it's a situation where um unfortunately um society you know it's indicative of the way society is right now uh, in chicago uh you know the boys men manager was simply asking uh some people to leave who were in the hotel at five o'clock in the morning and uh by the time he got them to the elevator uh I guess a couple of words were exchanged, and uh, their answer was to, uh, to shoot him in the head and kill him. And, uh, you know, it was uh, a very, very tough situation, not only for uh, boys and men, but for a lot of people on the tour, because we had all uh, spent a lot of time with Khalil every day, and uh, it was tough. It was tough. And then we go from Chicago, from that situation. Um, I was in Albuquerque, uh, New Mexico, doing a charity uh, softball game, and we went to a... Uh, a park to have chicken and you know have a little barbecue you know they try to tell me not to go right but um i grew up in the streets and uh i refuse to become a person who can't go out and hang with the people anymore yeah so i went to the park you know? <laughs> so uh you know while we out at the park and you know i had my my uh some of my sisters and brothers there people from the fire department some local kids some guy rides by the park, yells out of his car, I'm gonna come back and spray the whole park. Now, do you take that as a, you know, as a grain of, with a grain of salt or not? Well, me being, you know, uh, growing up in that type of environment, I asked everybody to uh, get in the mobile home and leave, and then I would stay with the fellas until, you know, the next group could leave. Uh, unfortunately, by the time, I'm, I'm glad all the kids, my little daughter was out there, you know, a lot of kids, they all got in the mobile home and all the women, and they left. But before we could leave, the guy came back and started spraying up the park, you know? So we had to dive behind trees, and it was, you know, uh, a very real situation. Uh, two or three guys in my group, you know, you know got shot, one uh, shot in the face, somebody in the leg, and, you know, but it has nothing to do, you can't blame that on uh, rap music. You can't blame that on, uh, you know, on uh, the city itself. That is the way the world is that we live in right now. I mean, you know, the guy knew that that was, hammering the park, and there were kids there, and it made no difference to him. He saw all the little kids out there, he just shot in the park. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people in that area know who he is, and um, pretty soon uh, uh, he's going to be, uh, you know, he's going to have to, uh, I say, pay for what he's done because a lot of people are actually calling to turn in his name, and I, I believe pretty soon he's going to be caught. Yeah. Um, you know... <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know... You talk about as much of this as you can talk about uh, on the air. I know a lot of the problems that you've been having have to deal with lies and confrontations you've had with law enforcement situations. How much of it can you explain to people and maybe to the people out there who need to hear it? Well, um, it's a very precarious position that I'm in 
uh, simply because, on the one hand, I can deal with the press, the lies they write, you know, in the tabloids, mm -hmm. things like that. Every day, I was reading in the paper last night. I stopped at a uh, truck stop coming here from Seattle or Portland, actually, and I picked up a magazine and it said uh, Hammer says he was sexually assaulted by a female groupie, and you know. And, I, and uh, they got quotes from me and everything. Of course, I never said anything like that. Mm -hmm. But then, on a whole nother end, um, I've been a victim of uh, being caught. You know, like you say, I'm building a house. Well, I'm actually a man, though, without a home. Because on one end, in the streets like where I'm from in Oakland, for a year and a half straight, when the police would arrest people, they would slam them in a the car and say, hammer time. And slam them in the car and say, uh, yeah, I just put you in uh, the brand new car that Hammer bought me. And um, they knew that that would hurt with my street credibility with the people in my neighborhood. So, so, so young guys who've been arrested, like, told you what happened during they the... They called me from jail. Because, you know, I'm, I'm from Oakland, and uh, it's no secret, you know, of the 15 or 20 guys I have out here with me, they, most of them are from jail. And, you know, because I want to get them out of that, I bring them with me and give them a new job and show them a new, you know, a different way of life. But when they, when something happens to them, they go to jail, they pick up the phone, they got my phone number, they call me at home. And they'll call me and say, Hammer, you should have heard what the police said to me today. He said when the helicopter was chasing me, that was the Hammercopter chasing him. And these rumors have spread all the way from Oakland through L.A. And because I get people calling me all the time. And it's not a good thing. And especially when I've been a person who spent a lot of my time, you know, with the kids, trying to help the kids, you know, to, to steer them away from doing wrong things. It don't help to have the police, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to destroy the foundation that you're trying to build to be a help when, instead of a hurt to the situation. Okay, so l let me ask you, um, to make it fair, let me play devil's advocate. Why would a cop want to destroy your credibility in the ghetto? Why would he tell him that uh, Hammer bought us a helicopter? That gets very deep because, you know, there's a lot of reasons why you might not want Hammer to stop some of the guys who doing what they doing from doing, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and see that that goes. If if I'm benefiting from anything that's going on in the streets, uh, why would I want Hammer to tell little kids this is not the thing to do? Oh, okay. You see, because I have made a good impact, especially uh, in my neighborhood. You know, the guys who are with me right now, they were running things in our neighborhood. I mean, and a lot of people know what I mean when I say running things. They had a trade going. They had little kids posted out doing their little things and, you know, and everything like that. But since they've been here for three years, have none of them have been picked up and went back to jail for any type of drug thing at all. None of them. Not one in three years. Okay. So somebody, somebody, somewhere, loses money when this goes on. Now, the, the, the ideal is not to try to hurt uh, people's income. That's not the idea. The ideal is to save lives, because whether people understand it or not, there is a certain amount of murder and death that comes along with the game. That, that's a part of doing business. So when people stop doing that, you know, some people are hurt in other areas. And, you know, we don't have no time to cover all that. But yeah. basically, it's, it's an unfortunate situation, because when, you, when they said that, that hurt, uh, hurt my credibility with a lot of the people in the streets who've known me for a long time because they in jail fighting with people. You know, you don't know Hammer, you can't say this. And, you know, I have uncles who are not the best citizens in the world, and they call me because I just had another fight. This dude said this about you, man, and I ain't having it, you know. And then mm -hmm. on a whole other avenue, the police contacted me, I would say, three months ago with a letter saying, you know what, Hammer, we finally figured it out. You the kingpin of all the dope dealers. You the man who lend you the money. See, you making the money clean. You putting it back in the streets because you got that. Wait, wait, wait. You, you, got, you got a letter from, from law enforcement? Oh, officials? yeah. Say they want to see me. They said either come and tell us or see us in uh, uh, before the grand jury. You know? So, I mean, you know, uh, if, how can I win in either one of those positions? One end, you kill me in the streets. The other end, you say I'm the man. Now, I, I can't be both of them. I got to be... Uh, either one or the other. So I've dealt with that because I'm not a person who runs. You know, I'm, I'm going to deal with it. Um, the third shooting that, that wasn't really uh, made public, you know, uh, there was another shooting incident. Um, I don't know where they come from or who do them or whatever, but none of that, none of that is going to stop me from uh, doing what I'm doing. I've even had a record company, and I, I don't want to lamb blast nobody's name or anything, but they told me, Hammer, you know what the problem is? You're a little too clean. Here's what we're going to do. Why don't you start to uh, uh, 
do a few things that maybe uh, dirty up your image a little bit. Maybe we can sell a little more records. I've had all that. I told him, go, you know, that's not me. I lived that life. I've been around with people involved in that. I'm going to continue to do what I do. Whether they like it or not, I'm going to try to encourage the kids to do the right thing. That doesn't mean that I lived a perfect life. I'm telling them to stay away from the negative things so that they won't ruin their lives. This wasn't your record label. It was another record label. Oh, okay. We'll be right back with more Hammer. We'll be back. When you were young, coming up, tough neighborhood, uh, income problems, did you ever think about selling drugs to get this watch quicker? Did I ever think about it? Yeah. yeah, I did. I did think about it. I got real, real close to trying to go full time, too, I remember. And uh, although my father doesn't live uh, in my house, I grew up with my mother. Um, I've always respected my father, you know, and, and, he, and uh, he came by and he heard the rumor. You know, he heard the rumor that I was selling weed. And uh, the words that he said to me and, and the tears that I saw in his eyes, you know, uh, it kind of, you know, it turned me around, you know. And that's why I've also chosen to, to be public with my daughter, simply to say that I've, I've figured out that one of the biggest problems that we have in our community is that the fact that there is just a, not enough fathers there to help the women raise the children. Mm -hmm. You have a reputation for being very strict with the people you employ. We were talking to No Bones and all the fellas up there. And uh, I was wondering, does it have anything to do with the way you were raised or your naval background? or Because well, you rough, man. Well, it, you know, it's a combination. I be try, What I try to do is prevent things from happening. You know, you only have to go down the road a few times. You know, it's like even the incident that happened uh, in Albuquerque, you know, um, it's not to say that we were prepared for it. It's to say that I've always told them, you know, and you can't go certain places, you know, certain things you can't do. I'm trying to keep them out of, out of as much trouble as possible. It has to do with my, my mother, my father, and my life in the streets. You know, people say a lot of bad things about the ghetto, right? Mm -hmm. But had I not grown up in the ghetto, mm -hmm. there's no way I'd be able to survive the things that I'm able to survive right now. I read lies about myself every day. But since all my partners used to talk about me anyway, it don't matter. <laughs> you know, they used to talk about me for free. They lie on me every day. Yeah. So when I read, you know, I, 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 read, I pick up a review on my concert the next day. I haven't been to a Hammer concert yet where people sat down. I, I've never seen that. I will pick up the paper the next day and read as 20,000 people sat on their hands while Hammer did too legit to quit. And I just look at it and I say, hey, well, you know, that's the way it go. But it's okay when tabloids do that. I've even read in the USA Today, you know, uh, stories that are tabloid-type stories, you know, and that threw me for a loop, you know, because I read in there that I sat outside in New York in a limousine while Sinead O'Connor was in a, a club, and I refused to go in until she came out, and then I sent two of my dancers in to give her a hard time and tell the DJ, play Hammer Records until she leaves. And that's stupid. <laughs> but, you know, I read that in the USA Today. You know, I said, man, it, it, uh, you know, it's, tab you know it's, it's that way in the press. The press write basically what they want to write. But I can deal with that from, you know, being brought up. And my discipline thing is simply to try to help people from getting into trouble because I got in enough trouble. My friends have gotten in enough trouble. I'm only trying to do some preventive maintenance. That's all. Yeah. Um, being a musician, more specifically a rapper, I want to get your opinion on the Sister Soldier situation? Well, I don't have all the details, you know. I've been on the road. I only got bits and pieces, and uh, when you only got bits and pieces, you know, mm -hmm. you can only, I, so I can only comment on, you know, uh, you have to be, like, real specific for me, because I know, mm -hmm. I know the perimeters of what we're involved with, uh, what she said, but I don't know actually what she said. So, um, 
I, I feel as though, you know, I, I, you know, I don't know. I, I know she has a right to express herself, mm -hmm. and I know uh, Bill Clinton don't know nothing about her. I know that, you know, and he yeah. probably doesn't know anything about the issues he was trying to raise, but I don't know what the actual issue was, so I'm not qualified to really comment. Let me bring something even closer to home. I was talking about Tipper. Um, the, <laughs> the iced tea situation is constantly in the news, um, and freedom of speech. I can comment on that one. Yeah. Yeah, I can, I can Work comment with on that one. It. Now, that, you know, the song itself, to me, that is a waste of time for uh, the people to spend a whole lot of time trying to say he made this song. Mm -hmm. They brought more light to the song. More people know about the song now than if, they, if it had been a top ten hit. Mm -hmm. And the problem is this. Anytime a person wants to express themselves like that, it's a reason for it. Like in my case right now, you know, I'm not, I'm, 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 I'm gonna be a person who say, yeah, let him say it. Not, I have known Ice T for seven, eight years. He's not gonna kill no cop. Mm -hmm. I see if you're making movies in Hollywood, doing, <laughs> doing records. That's not what he's saying. What he was basically doing is expressing the frustration with the harassment that goes on uh, in the inner city with the police. That's all he's doing. He's not recommending that anybody go out and commit murders and shoot cops and that type of thing. I, I, I know that from knowing Ice-T. And I feel as though he does have a right to express himself that way if that's what he uh, chooses to do. Yeah. Um, we should vote for Ice-T for president. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, my phones will be ringing off the hook now. Um, yeah, voting's important, you know. I'm, 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 well, it Who you is. Vote for? I, I can't say that yet. You know, <laughs> but, but voting is something that in the past I didn't do. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I didn't vote because I felt like I had a choice between the devil and his brother. You know, oh. and so and, you know I couldn't. He, he, who I'm a pick? You know, yeah. He'd he be grown next year. You know, so. <laughs> I, uh, so, but you know, I've thought about it, and unless I exercise my right to vote and try to at least change things and watch them happen, then I don't have a right to complain. So I went out and registered, you know, got myself together. Yeah. yeah. When the L.A. riots started, where were you watching from? Uh, somewhere in the Midwest. Somewhere in the Midwest. Actually, towards down south, actually, towards yeah. the south. And uh, I, I wasn't shocked because once the verdict came, I know the anger that I felt, mm -hmm. you know, uh, as a person. Forget the hammer stuff. That's a whole different thing. As a person, I felt betrayed, you know. I, I felt angry, um, you know. Uh, uh, I wanted to, to, to do something myself. I, I don't know about going out and do all those things, but I felt the anger. I, mm -hmm. wanted, to, I wanted to do something. And, uh, you know, I expressed that in my concert, you know, because I just couldn't see it. You know, there's no way, you know, uh, uh, Ray Charles could have saw that, you know. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, you know. And, you know. Um, thanks for stopping by. I gotta let Hammer get out of here because he's gonna change suits and head right. for the Los Angeles form or the Great <laughs> Western form and perform for two nights, right? Yeah, I'm at the form tonight, tomorrow night, and I'm in Orange County on Sunday. You know, six days a week, six days a week, 130 shows. I'll be finished in September. So, wow. doing my thing. Too legit to quit. Too legit to quit. This is Hammer. Yeah. I know I should use